Hey everyone, Michael Anthony here. Van Halen, Chickenfoot, Sammy in the Circle. But anyway, you're listening to the only podcast that is dedicated to breaking down the entire Van Halen catalog one track at a time. And the podcast will rock. Ow! Hello, baby! Hello, all you rockers, rockets, and everything in between. Thank you for joining us for a new edition of And The Podcast Will Rock. We are the show that dives into the catalog and discography of one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, Van Halen. One track at a time. That's how we do it. Welcome back. If you have been following us for a while, and if you're new here, welcome to the show. Uh, I am your co-host, Mark Kamaya. With me, as always, Corey Morissette. Corey are you feeling as tired as I am? Oh boy, let me tell you, I uh, I, I stopped. Uh, I took a little break from work, so my last day of work was December twenty second, and I just came back this Monday, January 9th. So I had that whole time off. And I tell you, to get back in the swing of things, especially when you get to be my age, you guys can't relate. You're much younger than me, but when you get to be my age, uh, this week is kicking my ass. But uh, but it's been good. Uh, had a good holidays. Had a nice break, and uh, uh, had a lot of g- great comments on last week's show, Mark. Uh, that we were able to take uh, two hours of incoherent rambling and cut it down to 40, bi- 40 <laughs> minutes of audio. And then as uh, Tom pointed out, uh, we had another like hour and 15 minutes to it just to really extend the proceedings. That's what we do. Sorry, Tom. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was all uh, by by the grace of our producer extraordinaire Corey that uh, was able to edit all of that down. So uh, if you love the episode, who you have to thank is not me; it's him. So be sure and thank Corey very much for that. Well, what I heard more than anything was uh, it's really great that we're able to bring Mark back in on that show because you know <laughs> we can't do a show without Mark, right? Like it, it just wouldn't work. So uh, I'm glad we're able to still kind of keep the panel's comments, but get your uh, input as well. But still, I'm very mm. much looking forward to just a normal, quiet, laid back show here tonight. Uh, we got the wheel. We got one song. We don't know what it is. And we got a great guest. That's right. I don't know how uh, quiet and calm it'll be because I think it's going to uh, every time we have a guest, uh, the party gets turned up just a bit. I s- expect no less from our uh, guest here. A longtime fan of the show. One of our first, I believe, one of the early ones. Uh, please welcome Jonathan Todd, a.k.a. JT. Jonathan, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm fantastic. I've been super excited about I got my podcast for mug. I got a little tequila in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, bow to the wheel. I... JT's <laughs> doing it up right nice. Little tequila in the podcast will rock coffee mug. That's the way to do it. Yeah. If only it were Cabo Wabo tequila to keep it really on brand. <laughs> but but we understand, you know, that stuff goes out real quick. Yeah, ran out this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> No worries, no worries at all. Uh, Corey, what say we get started with this thing? Um, we we uh, we know there's not a ton of uh, Van Halen news in the ether right now, but if there is something that I am uh, missing, please uh, inform me. Well, there's a couple of cool things on the Van Halen news desk. And again, uh, we recommend everyone go to www.vhnd.com to get all your Van Halen news. Uh, they have a, a great uh, audio interview from 1979, uh, uh, journalist uh, Jazz Obrecht uh, interviewed Eddie Van Halen about uh, building your own guitar back in 1979, and they posted that full audio on the Van Halen News Desk. It's a terrific listen. I recommend everybody go check that out. Also, uh, there's a link to the Sammy Hagar 75th Birthday Bash documentary uh, that that's uh, happening. Uh, you can see it on uh, the RedRocker.com or on his YouTube channel. Uh, Fox Nation, I think, is, is the one that put it out, but. Uh, Looks like a very interesting documentary coming up on the Red Rockers' uh, 75th birthday. Absolutely. 75 and still rocking, still howling and still swooning. Uh, And uh, not not many uh, rockers can say that uh, they've kept the longevity up that long and can still do it uh, pretty successfully. So say what you will about uh, Sammy Hagar, you guys. But uh, what you cannot deny is the man's uh, star power and his ability to just keep on rocking. Uh, It's not really newsworthy per se, but something interesting did happen uh, in my personal life. Uh, While we were scrolling through social media, uh, my lovely lady, Christy, got to actually bear witness to someone who put a video together of just the 
tracks of David Lee Roth not saying actual words in the song uh, Running With The Devil. Right. Just all of his nonsense syllables and his, uh, you know, all of the howling. And it was just the video of nothing but that. The song, but nothing but Dave Dave not saying actual words. Uh, and it was hilarious and awesome. And I think I even said to her, I'm pretty sure Corey has all of that audio somewhere in our... Uh, oh, you know, God, in, in the oh, yeah! <laughs> there case in point right there <laughs> yes uh so that was delightful um like i said not newsworthy just something fun i thought i'd bring up because put a big old smile on my face it's a fun little video and yeah i think most of my uh, david Lee ross sound clips come from that oh god yes no <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what really made me made me laugh the whole time was just the fact that <laughs> There's tons that of them. I knew I knew for a fact that everything I was hearing I had heard before because of Corey on the show. <laughs> so uh yeah, do yourself a favor. Uh if you like hearing what Corey does with these uh little sound clips, uh find that video of, of Sammy, or I'm sorry, of Dave uh's uh his his tracks from Running with the Devil, but it's not him actually saying words. You will have a good time, you will laugh. I imagine Christy enjoyed that quite a bit. Very much so. So it was yeah. a nice little little thing to uh, contribute in the household <laughs> over here. Um, but uh, but to keep the train rolling, it's I believe now comes the time where we uh, get into the rock and pole. Yeah. Yes, that's absolutely right. Last week uh, we did push comes to shove, and uh, I thought this one uh, maybe wouldn't be quite as definitive as it was, but we had over a hundred votes again, uh, and it was eighty six point eight percent. What dreams are made of? Thirteen point two percent. This dream is over. Uh, JT, does uh, the results of that poll uh, shock you at all? No, uh, I think it's a fantastic song. It's another example of Van Halen doing something that isn't right down the center. And and that's what I love about that band is they so, such a variety of music. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Fantastic tune. Cool. How about you, Mark? I mean, uh, I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that it was a, it was high as high as it is uh, with the uh, what dreams are made of, but that's just because I barely kind of gave this song a uh, the thumbs up. There were there were some saving graces there, but uh, uh, it wasn't wasn't my favorite. So I'm a little I I am kind of surprised that it was so high. But hey, look, a lot of people like push comes to shove, as it turns out. But what in the world are they saying about it? Is what I want to know. Oh, we got tons of comments. Let's start with uh, our good buddy, Kyle Anderson, who says, love this one. Different vibe. The solo was one of Eddie's most interesting and different. So there you go. Couldn't agree more for that one. His solo yeah. is really what kind of uh, like a lot of the songs. I'm kind of like you. I, I still rank it near yeah. the bottom of that album, even though there's not a bad song on that album. It's still great. But it, it's the solo that really elevated it for me. If, uh, false yeah. premise. Yeah. He says, uh, Dave and Mike steal the show on this one. Dave delivers a smooth as vocal and Mikey's bass groove is funky as hell. Of course, EVH delivers as usual. This one is a top shelf hidden gem for me. So they're false premise, uh, uh, singling out Dave and Mikey uh, for doing a great job on that yeah. track. And he's not wrong. He's not wrong at all about uh, their their contributions uh, to that track. Sure. Uh, it's a few of the saving graces for sure. Yep. Uh, Robert Cato says, just to show you once again how dynamic they are, Dave asked for something reggae, and Eddie says, okay, love this song, used to chill to it under some influence back in high school, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, Robert. What What is he talking about, caffeine? Oh, I, mm, who knows? You'll have to get back to us on that with a follow-up. <laughs> uh, Fijis Rilbin uh, says, tone and solo equals magnificent. That drum fill before the last part of the solo is uh, uh, ethereal. Bass is incendiary, man. He he got word of the day toilet paper Ooh, for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> also, there's probably nobody who wants to admit it, but this is basically a late era disco song. Well, yeah, that's pretty much what uh, Eric Senich told us. As that's exactly what Eric said. Yeah. Yep. So, and uh, the more we listen to it, the more I realize, like, well, Eric's not wrong. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Metallero 214 says, my Van Halen preferring song of all times, terrific bass and really most creative Eddie Job. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, David yeah. Davy Lee Smith says, as the saying goes, when push comes to shove, I believe it was inevitable for me to say that this is a criminally underrated gem in the Van Halen canon. Absolutely what dreams are made of. Whisper it with me. Push. Shove. <laughs> I uh, I whispered it with you in in spirit. Okay, that, that was just a tiny creepy, just a tiny bit. <laughs> Damn, I was Look, going for I, full out creepy. 
No, yeah. <laughs> Corey knew that he he read the assignment. He understood it. He performed yes. it. So you know yes. that's uh, if if anyone is to be blamed for that one, uh, Davy Lee Smith for encouraging it. You know what? Uh, I'm Ron Burgundy. I'll read whatever anybody puts on the teleprompter. So you tweet it, and I'll confirm. say it. Confirm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semi Geek says, "Love it. Good change up on a unique album. Still my favorite of all Van Halen albums." And we got a lot of that. People love this record. Mm. Uh, Michael Easter says the song is just okay, but the solo is top five. I remember reading that Edward wanted it to be as weird as possible, either due to Holdsworth influence or to distance himself from the Van Halen clones. And this solo is the epitome of that. That's pretty much how I felt the song. Well, I would say better than okay, but yeah, the solo absolutely top five. I don't even know that I would consider the solo weird other than maybe the fact that it's it's weird that the solo just rips while maybe the rest of the song not quite so. Mm-hmm. Um but definitely not uh while I I respect your opinion on that Michael. I, my only slight pushback is no no, we've heard weirder from Eddie in, as far as solo goes. We've definitely sure, heard weirder. Sure. Uh but uh but I get what you're saying. All right, uh, VH5150, VH says, Eddie's best solo is on that song. So there's another vote for yeah. an all-time Eddie Van Halen solo. Uh, Michael Snyder says, there are no bad songs on Fair Warning. There aren't even any songs that drop down to good. They're all great. Mm, there's a take for you. But uh, apparently you're not alone in that sentiment based on what we're reading. Yep. Uh, our good buddy Greg Zito says, give me another cigarette over here. Uh, Corey, is there anything left in that bottle? No, fuck, that <laughs> bottle was gone a while ago. Uh, oh, Phil, a no. spectacular song to end your live show. Funkiest groove in the Van Halen catalog. Perfect for hanging out or the after party. <laughs> I think I said to this, uh, I said this to Corey off air, but uh, I'm I'm really glad that I was able to sort of uh, provide uh a commentary on top of what was recorded and that I dropped out of the live show because had I been remotely coherent for the rest of that live show for that particular song. I don't know that I would have been too kind to it because I don't think it would have fit the, uh, uh, let's say the vibe I was feeling in that, in that moment. (laughs) So um, it's, it's, it's probably better that way, but uh, very much appreciative for everyone for tuning in to the, that show when it was live. I tell you one of the guys who was on that panel, Kevin Brown uh, tweeted, the day after the pod, I didn't remember that this was the song we spun. Such a fun <laughs> night. And I, I need to apologize. Uh, Kevin pointed out on Twitter, uh, he listened back to the show, and he can't believe how much Kevin Brown, drunk Kevin Brown talks. And and like he's like, why didn't anybody <laughs> shut me up? And I had to point out I tried by ignoring him because I was off in my own fucking world looking for more whiskey, and I was missing him waving the entire show to, to add more comments. But I promise the next live show will will be uh, much less drunk and probably much less fun because of it. <laughs> Nonsense. Give us all the drunk Kevin Browns that you can spare. Well, I, I'm telling you, for February's live show, I'm I'm tempted to pitch uh, Fuck It February, where you just throw everything, just, just yeah, just, drunk just as possible, and just, yeah. bring everybody on the show, you know, Van Halen fans, <laughs> just, panelists, everybody. <laughs> spin the wheel like five times, you know, just yeah, because. Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see, we'll see, yeah, folks. We'll see. I'll, I'll put it a poll. Should we do fucking February? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Rihanna says, uh, love this one, one of my favorites. So, there you go. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, our, our good friend, uh, Kelsey Van Halen, she was excited and all cap. She exclaimed, Oh, yes, let's go. So, yeah, big. F- all right. I know she loves big fair warning. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Powell says, uh, Corey was right. I've uploaded everything so far. Come at me. And this one is a very enthusiastic thumbs up. On the bracket, I mean, he's doing the brackets on Twitter, uh, breaking down his yeah. songs. Push Comes to Shove is three and one. So it more than holds its own with a phenomenal groove and swagger. Great performances all around. Thank you very much for that, yeah, Ryan. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tom, when he wasn't making fun of the fact that we don't know when to shut up and still uh, you know, add an hour's <laughs> worth of content to a 40-minute show, said, uh, absolutely not skippable for me. Grand Canyon groove, fun guitar vibe in the intro and verses. Dave is in the pocket, and that solo is the cherry on the Van Halen Sunday. That is this song. There you go. How very, very eloquently put. Thank you, Tom. And you know what? He's starting to hashtag uh, TWDAMO. Let's get that hashtag trending. Uh, that's what dreams are made of. So There you go. There you or Twadamo. Yeah. Twadamo. <laughs> Uh, Brad Gold says that baseline, the solo, the slow groove, fantastic. There you go. Yeah. 
uh, Jonathan Meisner. I really like this one because I agree with him here. Uh, not saying it's exactly like these songs, but it's got a groove not unlike another one bites the dust or dragon attack. I thought a dragon attack right away, but yeah, another one that uh, bites the dust fits that mold. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The baseline makes me want to watch something grimy or sleazy like Fritz the Cat or Heavy Metal. And if you're <laughs> my age, you know what those two things are. I oh, love it I because it's such an are. unconventional <laughs> Van Halen song. You watch a little uh, Fritz the Cat, do you there, Mark? Uh, both of them, because there are two of them. So, yes, I have. And uh, <laughs> I like I like the reference to both Fritz the Cat and Heavy Metal. There's, there's a good uh, Sammy Hagar tie-in for you. Jonathan may we may win a tweet of the week with that one. That was a great one there. Yeah. Uh, there is no prize though. So don't wait by your mailbox or anything. Maybe we should mail everybody a, a sticker for a tweet of the week. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss go, that. Yeah. Off Maybe we'll yeah. get a sticker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jane Hickey says everyone delivers on this track, but love, love, love how Mikey is front and center until that solo kicks in. Oh yeah. It's yep. a, it, it rips. It rips. There's no, not going to argue. And finally, Scott Monroe I love the slower vibe in DLR's low husky delivery, and Ed Solo is just incredible, otherworldly. Fun fact, this listen during your pod is the first time I realized Dave whispers push and shove during the solo, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> that is cool. You learn something new every day when you tune into and the podcast will rock. Tell your friends about it. <laughs> there you go, and those are the Twitter comments for this week, Mark. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. And thank you all for uh, tuning in and for participating. Keep it up. And yeah, let's let, let's get uh, to Damo. Uh, let's get that hashtag rolling because that sounds like a, a lot of fun. And it also sounds chaotic because it's going to confuse so many people when they read it because they won't understand it until they listen to the show. And I'm all about chaos. Loki is my hero. So there you go. Uh, and John Mariano but, uh, as well. Well, I wouldn't say he's my hero. I uh, I tolerate him. He is he is a uh, he's a presence that we just kind of we we accept. We accept that he's there, and <laughs> it just we because you, you can't get rid of him. You know, we couldn't get rid of him if we tried. Yeah, he's uh, like Miss TV want, that won't go away. And we we wouldn't want to because we adore him. You know, it, even in all the chaos, we adore it. So, uh, with that being said, uh, Corey, if you're ready, Jonathan, if you're ready, uh, what do you say we head to the wheel of either destiny or of despair? Uh, what shall it be today? Um, we're at the wheel. We, we, uh, we're just, we're coming down. We're coming down pretty good. Uh, I believe we got 60 songs left. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. 60 songs that's uh that's gonna go in the blink of an eye and then what will we do uh we'll we'll well we'll have to discuss there is speculation we'll see but before we spin it we got to do what we always do everyone grab yourself a drink because it's time to manifest that's right we're gonna manifest ourselves a uh a song from the wheel mm. I always ask, so I'm going to start. Uh, JT, I'm going to start with you, man. You're our guest. You've been you've been patient. You've been waiting all this time to uh, to finally get in on the show to to discuss a Van Halen track. What would you ideally love for this wheel to spin tonight? So, live in the world of and not or. Ah. So I I like Dave. I like Sammy. And I like Gary. And so oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a Dave song, Sammy song, and a Gary song. Ooh, Dave, I see what you're doing. Yeah. It, my second favorite Van Halen song is So This Is Love. Yeah. Love to hear that tonight. A killer track. That's From a Sammy. Track. My second favorite song is Take Me Back Deja Vu. Love that tune. Good Ooh, and I'll probably right. get a lot of hate on this from Gary. I love the song A Year to the Day. And I'm hoping one of those three pop up. We have not done that one. Uh, we've we've almost cleared uh, Van Halen three uh, nearly, but uh, that that would get us one step closer. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Uh, we we've had a pretty good run of of no Van Halen three tracks, uh, which leads me to believe we might be in trouble. But it, it's gonna <laughs> happen eventually. So uh, uh, all right, right on. He's he he went for three. He's shooting the shot from all the way downtown but Corey, what say you what song or era do you want to manifest tonight i think jt had a good idea i'm going to pick uh three songs too one from each era because I, I thought that was a great great suggestion so uh for a diamond dave song man i've been killing for something for van halen 2 i'm wearing my van halen 2 t-shirt uh man can mm -hmm. we light up the sky why not light up the sky for oh, van halen song. 2. love to hear that one uh for a sammy tune We've been calling him for it forever, uh, Mark. I'm convinced it's probably going to come in a live show, but I'm going to try and manifest it here tonight. Humans being, 
uh, oh, from the best of yeah. volume one. I love that track. And a Gary song, which I finally got my Van Halen three copy of vinyl. It showed up in the <laughs> mail right. last you week. Did. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, how about a little fire in the hole? Let's go with that. So those are the three I'm manifesting here today. Have you, uh, have you, have you taken Van Halen three for a spin? Not yet. I've been so busy Man. with work, but this weekend it's going to happen. All right. All right. Well, you, you, uh, got a, you got in that more than once though. Like the oh, first time is hard. It, hard. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I, hey, I, I love without you. I, I thought that was a great song. So I'm looking forward to popping on true, Van yeah. Halen three. Yeah. That's a great maybe, song. But uh, I think you guys have said production. It, it just not great. So it's hard to listen. Maybe perhaps, uh, perhaps actually listening to it uh, via your stereo. You know, on your vinyl. It may, maybe that'll have a little bit of a, a strong, powerful, positive influence on you uh, in terms of that album because. As we have discussed, and as the listeners know, that is probably been our least favorite that we've covered so far because they're just full of duds. Uh, I I personally have just been very very negative about that whole album thus far. Apologies to Gary, but uh, so I don't know. But so maybe yeah, you might feel differently uh, giving that thing a spin. So uh, stay tuned for that, you guys. I'm sure Corey will keep us updated. So I guess it's my turn. Well, uh, all right. For a Sammy track, uh, I, I'm, I, I too am gonna go ahead and just say like, give me humans being. I think it would be probably a lot, a lot of fun if we do it on a live show where we have, uh, you know, more people to uh, throw in their two cents. But man, I just, I, I just, I really want to talk about that song for a multitude of reasons. So I'm gonna manifest that for my Sammy track, and for my Dave track. Well, I can't believe we still have not spun ain't talking about love i mean it's perhaps that's going to be uh uh one of the like final five final four whichever but uh so be it but i'd really like to talk about it tonight uh and for a gary track uh give me uh uh give me uh more than words from extreme that's the only one I'll, <laughs> I'll, that's that is the one i will uh i'll happily discuss if we spin that, it'll be a miracle. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> if we spin that, something went wrong. Something yeah. went like, Where something did this extreme wheel show. come yeah. from? Yeah. yeah. Court has been yeah. hacked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Mar it's Mariano. Gary it was him. <laughs> no, but yeah, Mariano, not a fan of Annie Hillen. Yeah. Mar you know Mariano and Gary like are in cahoots. And so yeah. <laughs> they come to hijack the show. All right. Well, we all technically, I guess, picked three songs. I'm going to hit shuffle three times. One, right. two, three. All right. You ready, Mark? You ready, JT? Uh, I'm, I'm so ready. nervous. This is, is nerve-wracking. <laughs> it's this my is favorite exciting. part of the week. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, we're going to get Van Halen one. We almost got Pleasure Dome. Oh, my God. It's oh, Ice Cream Tattoo. Man. We got ice the Ice Cream Man. Cream Man. Van Halen we one. Oh, I'm so happy. Look how close we got to Pleasure Dome again. Oh, it was right there. It was right it was there. Oh, oh man. This you know I, what's going to happen. Eventually when we the wheel finally gives us a Pleasure Dome and we we can't uh negate it, it's going to be on a day where you just absolutely don't want to talk about it. But <laughs> you, I, I, I think I got to be drunk when week. we spin that. I got to be drunk. All right, fair enough. You heard it here, folks. So it, when it's got to be a live it, show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a live show, maybe a live show, but if it's a, a recording, uh, we'll, we'll have like a brief intermission so Corey can just get ripped and then we can talk about it. <laughs> All right, Mark, uh, I know you got thoughts on Ice Cream Man. Don't tip your hand here, but uh, what do you think of this spin here tonight? I won't tip my hand. I'll just say uh, Ice Cream Man has a lot of, what? how do I put this? I don't want to say Roth-isms. I'll just say it. it is very... David Lee Roth, and you can take that for uh, uh, for better, for worse, or you can take it for anything in between. Uh, we'll, you'll get my thoughts later. But uh, this, when I think of David Lee Roth, I don't automatically think of a Van Halen song. Honestly, I like or like a, a more popular Van Halen song, like "Ain't Talking About Love" or "Are Unchained" or uh, "Panama." Even no, I immediately think of Ice Cream man because uh it's just very much uh a roth song and uh and we'll we'll discuss more on it later but uh that's that's my initial thoughts without tipping my hand and that's what i'll say uh how about yourself Corey? 
Well, um, I, we've been without a Van Halen one song for a while. Uh, yeah. So I'm very anxious to get into this one. Uh, it, it was It's a cover uh, by a Chicago blues musician, John Brim, uh, way back in the 1920s. Uh, th- this is a, an all-time uh, David Lee Roth favorite. Um, so, uh, again, I'm not going to tip my hand, but uh, JT, uh, what are your recollections of Ice Cream Man? So I I remember buying the album. I mean, I came into Van Halen from Sam Yar and then went back and bought this album. And I just love this song. Um, it's probably my second favorite song on the album. Oh. And in fact, about 10 years ago, my son was eight. I made him learn the lyrics and we did a little video, you know, before the tick and the youth existed. And I'll tweet it because he sings the lyrics and he dances <laughs> in a very Ridley Roth way. Um, not early Dave Roth when he became Critical Dave later. Um, <laughs> but I'm super excited about this. I love the song. Um, and I think I agree with Mark. It, it's uncoverable because of what Dave did to it. But I also think uncoverable for what Ed did to it. The solo is killer. Oh, hundred percent. And we yeah, have, he really kind of firebombs the whole proceedings, doesn't he? With that solo. Oh, he comes in. I mean, the whole band comes in and it's just slamming. So I'm super excited to listen to this with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like, I, I'll have a, uh, it's been a while since I've actually played it willingly. So uh, I'll have, I might have some very uh, fresh uh, perspectives here, but uh, yeah. very, I, but I'm, I'm very familiar with the song, but like I said, it's been a while. All right, let's head back to uh, 1978 and Van Halen 1. This is Ice Cream Man. Dedicate one to the lady. Summertime, sir, babe, need something to keep you cool. I now, summertime, sir, babe, need something to keep you cool. Better look out now, though. Dave's got something for you. Tell you what it is. I'm your ice cream man, stop me when I'm passing by. Oh my, my, I'm your ice cream man, stop me when I'm passing by. See, now all my flavors are guaranteed to satisfy. Hold on a second, baby. I got- so, so I love this intro because you really believe Dave. Mm. Like, he, he just totally sells this. It, yeah. It's just fantastic. It's not really that much singing, so it doesn't push him very hard it's in his wheelhouse and uh and that's right. him on guitar too we always talk yeah. about how sammy added another dimension because he could play rhythm guitar you know here's right. dave playing a little acoustic guitar on that tune sounded all right yeah. hey, i think i saw a picture where he used to have this guitar that shaped like an ice cream cone called right. the mm-hmm. dave sickle uh, i would <laughs> love to know whatever happened to that <laughs> I think he had a, a microphone that was like in the shape of a, an ice cream cone as well at some point uh i could be making that up but i thought he did um there there's your dave sickle there right there uh this is uh this this uh this blues riff that he's that he's playing uh for the song is one of the early influences on me when uh i was encouraged to as i was learning to play guitar in my early days uh i was encouraged to learn blues like learn some blues riffs a lot of your uh a lot of your rock and roll dudes uh learned that way and i went yeah sure they did sure they did and of course that was absolutely correct. Uh, and, but I thought, I don't know, br- blues doesn't sound very, uh, very cool thing to, to learn and play. And then I, I remembered, wait a minute, ice cream man sounds like it's got a uh, uh, blues riff in it from Van Halen. What's cooler than Van Halen? Uh, very little is cooler than Van Halen. So uh, as soon as I heard that and I said, okay, all right, I want to, I want to do that. And a lot of my blues playing in those early days uh, were directly influenced by uh, the riff and Ice Cream Man. Fun fact. Well, and Dave yeah. really pushed this to get it on, on the album, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. it was on uh, the cassette they gave to Gene Simmons and he didn't like it, but he let him cut <laughs> it anyway. Uh, and then he pushed uh, to get it on the first album as kind of a tribute to the blues. Right. You know, I don't so. mean to guitar g- guitar geek out on you, Mark, but this was one of the, the first time I was ever introduced to an alternate tuning it's an open e and yeah uh, it is um you know it, it, that has opened up a whole new world for me as a good player i had to learn how to play it uh differently like in just kind of standard tuning yeah. uh because yeah I, at that time i wasn't tuning down i wasn't doing anything uh crazy with the uh, string not not too much outside of the key of e to be honest with you uh or c 
Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, that later on, I would I would find out like, oh, OK, that's how he did it. Well, I learned it a different way and it sounds fine. So it's fine. <laughs> I think the strings sound good. I'm not a musician. <laughs> I'm not a guitar they do. player. They do sound good. <laughs> <laughs> All flavors and push-ups too I'm your ice cream man, baby Stop me when I'm passing by See, now all my flavors are guaranteed to satisfy Hold on one more Well, I'm usually passing by just about 11 o'clock <laughs> I never stop, I'm usually passing by just around 11 o'clock And if you let me cool you one time You'll be my regular stop All right, boys all right, I got to think that uh, Darren and Steve uh, from the DLR cast are, are really pissed off right now because uh, I'm sure they would love to cover this on our live show next week because uh, this is Ultimate David Lee Roth, right? Well, it, yes, it is. This this is exactly you said it. Uh, I I let it out at the top of the at the top of the show before we uh, played the song. I was like, this is a very David Lee Roth song. He didn't write it, but he might as well have uh, because it's it's very much him. Uh, and really, at this point, it's all him. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I don't think I realized he was playing uh, the guitar on this uh, on this track, at least uh, the acoustic part of it. Um, so there you go. Yeah, this is all this is all Dave, you guys. Like, so don't don't think that I don't think Dave uh, contributes a lot to Van Halen because I mean this is just one song, but this one song is is pretty pretty uh powerful and influential so and, and it's so far it's all dave so don't think that i'm a dave hater just because i think sammy's the better technical singer i i remember listening to this for the first time and you know you're going through song 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 and then this starts and it's like where is this going this was out of left field on van halen one <laughs> we're about to know oh, where yeah. it's going because all mm. of a sudden i can get why this is on the album um, yeah, it is an interesting. It, it's a twist of a uh, kind of uh, a curve of the dynamic or the uh, of how the vibe is for the for the album. So I think if I remember right, this comes to "Feel Your Love Tonight," and you know it's kind of an up tempo rocker. And then you hear this, and it's yeah. like, oh, wh what's going on here? Was there a mistake? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, what, yeah. The B side. <laughs> yeah. It actually goes "Feel Your Love Tonight," then "Little Dreamer," then "Ice Cream Man." Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. So my memory's getting foggy as I get older and grayer. It it happens. I don't mean to be one of those guys. Actually, uh, it, it can be. <laughs> That's all right. I said it wrong many, many times. Join the club, my friend. <laughs> I don't know any other singer that can that and then hit that note. Like, I know we rip on Dave's vocal performance. Wow. I mean, that was like, whoa. No, that's pretty that awesome. Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, there's the Rothism. You know, he huh. was uh, very, very good at doing, that was one of his specialties, I think. And uh, he was very, very good at, at it. Um, and now, now that uh, the whole band comes in, it it sounds like Van Halen, like the yeah. Van Halen we we know and love, especially during this. Uh, if you're spinning the album and you've been following it thus far, you go like, okay, yeah, as you say, JT, uh, where is this going? This song, you're like, ah, oh, here we go. You're right. You're still <laughs> listening to the same band. Don't worry. Right. Uh, we're we're here. But when I listen to it, I just think about like uh, Eddie, Alex, and Mikey, just with their heads down, grooving along, and letting <laughs> Dave be Dave. And hey, we're just focused on jamming and, and making a great sound. <laughs> That's a good feeling. Yeah, I think of something else. Or like, I, I think of just like Eddie and the boys, just sort of just like, all right, uh, we're gonna chug this for as long as we can, and when we're done, we'll go in the studio and join Dave. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs>
great. Now, when I said uh, Eddie Firebombs, uh, the the song, uh, that's kind of what I meant. He comes in hot. But that fruit just takes my breath away. Yeah. Like, it's unreal. That is a... Uh... You know, I I don't I don't know how you uh rank like do a whole ranking system of Eddie solos from like uh least best to best and not throw this one on the list. I really don't I don't understand how anyway because nobody nobody talks about uh, the solo from Ice Cream Man like ever. If they do, I'm not hearing it. Like it's not loud enough. Everyone talks about Eruption or you know like any other song where Eddie very clearly stands out and it's the solos become iconic this should be iconic because at, at at no point does eddie like stray into the territory of this could be a different song like no 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 the solo fits the song but it right. also uh, just provides not just a little bit of extra flavor but like everything you have in the shelf like every flavor whatsoever in the solo uh and I would be remiss if I didn't say I know the the solo that's where your focus is on Eddie solo but really tune into that rhythm section because Alex and Mike are doing some like incredible especially Alex are doing some really really great stuff in the back. I don't know if you uh Corey did you notice the rhythm section during the solo? Oh 100% and I was going to ask you guys like listening to it in headphones I know Eddie hated being panned to one side but having mm -hmm. Eddie on one side and Mikey like nice and clear in the mix on the other. Yeah. I love that. That was so I fucking love cool. It. Yes, I agree. They were so in the pocket and provide just like this great layer for Eddie to just be Eddie. Uh, and then it, I, this might be one of his longer lows. I mean, there's a point in which he hits the whammy bar and I'm thinking, okay, it's over. And then he keeps going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you know? no, that, like, oh, that, that quick dive bomb was just a, just a tease. And y'all yeah. know, I love me some Eddie dive bombs. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I don't is solo is any tapping. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah. They say all my flavors are to satisfy. Boy, Dave was really wanting to earn that uh, the soul and rhythm and blues sort of uh, badge of honor with that last little bit, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, but that, I guess you gotta, you gotta make, yeah, you gotta make a statement. Uh, and this is their first album. And, uh, if, if this song is going to be considered a, a more tame one, they said, no, think again. It's not, it's, we're putting the Van Halen spin on it and it's going to rock out, but we're still going to keep it bluesy. All right. Now, before we get into voting, uh, I'm just curious, we're going to play uh, my new favorite game. How many times did Van Halen play ice cream man live according to setlist.fm, which is not always correct, as we found out. Uh, let's start yeah. with uh, Mark Kameyer. How many times, remember, this is Price is Right rules. How many uh -huh. times did the band play Ice Cream Man? I think they played it 550 times. 550, that's a nice big number. JT, what do you think? I was going to go like 350. I'll go with 350. 350, okay. Well, Mark Kameyer... Come on down. You're the Showcase Showcase winner. Ice Cream Man was played 603 times. Wow. Oh. Ooh. And according to Setlist.fm, it's their 12th most played song in, in their entire uh, career. So pretty impressive. That, yeah, I, I could see that because it's a... Uh... It, it provides just a little bit of a respite, like if, if their entire set was just nothing but just like pound for pound rock tunes, just one after the other. Uh, it kind of gives them a, a nice little respite. Dave doesn't have to uh, kind of run around and jump and uh, no pun intended. Uh, he, <laughs> it's like, hand me my acoustic. Let me just, uh, let me just, you know, strum, do my blues it, thing real quick. You know what? You know, it, give it almost takes the ballad spot in the set list, right? Because they didn't do any ballads right. this time. Yeah. 
Uh, correct. Yeah. So, so yeah, I could, I, I could see why. And, but then also it has that nice bit where, Hey, when the band comes in, we, we smoke it right. Just like we were doing earlier. So uh, yeah, I, I could see them uh, throwing this on the set quite frequently. Um, just as long as, you know, the vocalist can do everything. <laughs> I, you know, I think this has got like everything you love about Van Halen from mm. great rhythm section to Dave being Dave to a great solo by Eddie. And they just sound like they're having fun playing it. And I don't want, I, I don't, I can't help but wonder if they played it 600 times, if they didn't really enjoy playing it, you know? Exactly. Yep. Good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, definitely no one's uh, having more fun than Dave on this one for sure, for you know, a, mul a multitude of reasons. But, uh, but the question really remains, uh, who among us is having fun with this track? So in order to determine that we have to, we have to give it a vote. We have to determine whether ice cream man is what dreams are made of, or perhaps the dream is over. So I'm going to start with uh, with our guest of honor, JT. You're here with us. You're on the show. You've heard Ice Cream Man. You did, you, you missed your shot, but it's still uh, you still got a uh, pretty uh, widely known Dave track. So my question to you, my dude, was this song, was Ice Cream Man what dreams are made of, or was the dream over? This is what dreams were made of. Um, no, this is everything that I love about Van Halen and, uh, David Lee Roth, Van Halen. Uh, you know, it's just this great mix of musicianship and fun. And, uh, you know, I, I can't stop listening to the track. It's fristic. There you go. Short and sweet and to the point. Uh, but I'm pointing at you, Corey. Do you uh -oh. agree with JT's assessment uh, and say that Ice Cream Man is what dreams are made of? Or uh, did the ice cream just melt away and as well as, well as uh, your dreams? Is the dream over? Did the ice cream truck drive by my house? Is that what you're, what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It didn't even it didn't even bother to stop. It didn't just even stop right yeah. past. Yeah. If you don't like ice cream, man, you're dead inside. Like that is just so much fun. And, and uh, like, like JT said, I, I couldn't say it any better. It sounds like they're having fun. And when they're having fun, I'm having fun. Band is cooking. This is David Lee Roth at his absolute best. Absolutely. This is what dreams are made of, but Mark Kameyer, a noted sourpuss who hates everything. David Lee Roth, the world wonders how you're going to vote. Is this what dreams are made of? Or is this dream over? Well, why keep the world waiting? Yes, as I said, no one is having more fun on this song than Dave. This is what I meant by Dave. Uh, uh, this is very much a David Lee Roth tune. Um, pretty sure this song was a catalyst of what he would do later in his in his solo career. Just just the influence of uh, the I, the song itself, Ice Cream Man. J Dave with all the ice cream cone references, all the little props and what have you. Uh, say what you will about all of that, but nevertheless, the song demonstrates something about Dave and that Dave is not just uh, a charismatic performer who, you know, doesn't it doesn't matter what he's doing musically. No, it does matter. In this song in particular, he's showing you what he can do. It's not just the uh, Van Halen Brothers show, uh, not even the uh, Michael Anthony show. It's David Lee Roth and David Lee Roth showcasing his musicianship, and he does have it. He When he wants to utilize it, he absolutely does. This is him, obviously... Uh, you know, they, they didn't write the song, so this is him making it as much his own as humanly possible. To me, it sounds like this has been uh, this is a song that Dave probably really wanted to do for a long time. It's it kind of just it just feels like one of these days I'm going to I'm going to do a recording of Ice Cream Man and it's, it's going to be mine and it's going to be it's going to be awesome and beautiful. And lo and behold, he he met the Van Halen boys and they agreed to do it. And. As the as JT and Corey said, it sounds like everyone is having a good time in this song. Not as much as Dave, but still, everyone's having a great time. And as Corey eloquently put it, when they're having fun, I'm having fun. We're all having fun when we're listening to fun Van Halen. Nothing 
epitomizes fun Van Halen more than I think this album itself. Yeah. And Ice Cream Man is certainly no exception to the rule. So absolutely, it's what dreams are made of. It's iconic. I don't see how, uh, again, Echo, I'll echo Corey. Uh, if you don't like Ice Cream Man, you're dead inside. Or you just simply don't like uh, David Lee Roth. So I'm anxious for the Twitter poll because if yes. someone downvotes this, I, I get angry. I just want to sit down with a beer and talk about their life choices. I mean, <laughs> I'll buy the beer. We, we, we <laughs> say that up. Uh, yeah, we say that a, about a lot of the songs that we think are just going to be a full clean sweep. There's no way, there's no chance. Unchanged uh. should have been like our first sweep, and it wasn't. There were still people that just went meh. And and I just and I can't even blame Mariano for that one because he knows better. So and he voted yeah, for I, yeah he voted what dreams are made of on that one like yeah. oh, that one still pisses me off. Yeah, because he he might be a bastard, but he's not a fucking bastard. So you know he he, under, <laughs> he understand you know that's that's just uh, recognizing awesome. So I agree with uh, with JT here. Uh, I'd be very curious to see who it is that downvotes this and downvotes it intentionally. Um, not in some sort of contrary or malicious way, just in like, I really don't dig that song. Please tell me why, because exactly. I'm, I'm very curious, exactly. very curious. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And if it's, if it's a simple answer of, I don't know, I listen to it and I just don't dig it. Like, I mean, okay. <sighs> uh, I guess I get, I guess I, you know, different strokes, but I, I can accept that. But also give me a little bit more than that, please. How many times um, but, did you listen to it? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that, that would be my, my, my next quarry is like, maybe give it another listen and just really listen to it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that, uh, with that being said, uh, we will have the, uh, the rock and pole up for ice cream man. Uh, so I'd be very curious to see what the results are for that. Uh, but in the meantime, over here at the at the show, full clean sweep. We all believe it's what dreams are made of. And uh, we're going to be uh, on the lookout to see what you all have to say about that. So another one down in the books, 59 songs to go. Uh, yes, sir. But before we go, before we go, Corey, an announcement to be made. Uh, we've I think we've talked about it before, but let's uh, it, it bears repeating. Please let the audience know what is coming down the pipeline. Our next live show is next Thursday, January 19th. I know it's weird being on a Thursday, but that worked best for our guests. So there'll mm -hmm. be less alcohol involved because I imagine most people work on the Friday. But we are getting, oh, I, I'm still looking forward to this. We're getting Darren and Steve from the DLR cast are going to be back on the show along with Darren and Brent from the Sammy Hagar show, the Bogus Otis show. We're going to spin one guaranteed Dave track, one Sammy track, meaning whatever we spin first we'll cover as long as it's not a Gary tune and the second track we're going to keep spinning until we get to the opposite and we're going to do one Dave one Sammy we're going to we're going to hash it out Dave versus Sammy helping us officiate kind of in the middle if uh the Dave Lee Ross side is the fire side if the Sammy side is the is the ice side uh Mark and I are going to be lukewarm water along with our good friend Eric Senich uh, contributor and writer for the Van Halen News Desk, also uh, responsible for the Booked on Rock podcast. So, Darren and Brent from the Bogus Oda Show, uh, Steve and Darren from the DLR cast with us in the middle. We're doing one Sammy track, one Dave uh, track next Thursday night, 9 o'clock Eastern. Uh, check it on our uh, YouTube channel, on our uh, on our webpage, uh, www.podcastlerock.com. It should be one hell of a show. Absolutely. The, the time has come. The, the battle between the singers, who is best? Uh, and uh, we have both sides of the of the field playing and uh, going to be uh, it's it's going to get heated, I think. Or maybe it won't. Maybe it won't get heated. Maybe we will come to a, a diplomatic sort of uh, understanding with one another. That's what I don't hoping. know. Let, 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 let's what, heal yeah. that divide, right? Let, 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 let's, you know, make a bridge between the David camp and, and the Sammy camp. Let, let, like JT said, we're, we're and not or. Uh, there, there's room to love both. Both Mark and I love both. Uh, and JT I, I pray, loves both. I pray Amsterdam or Spank doesn't come up when you roll that sandwich. <laughs>
Oh, well, if uh, let me just say if uh, <laughs> if Amsterdam does come up, uh, we will have we will have another guest another guest. On the, That's right. On yeah. the show who, 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 who very much would like to talk about that one. But that is all uh, in the hands of the gods. It's a song of ice and fire. Uh, who will come up on top? It's either all going to burn or it's all going to freeze over. We, we shall see. So tune in January 19th uh, live show next Thursday. Uh, the Bogus Oda Show boys and the DLR cast boys. I mean, it's just, it's going to be nuts, I think, but I think it's going to be hilarious and it's going to be fun either way, you know, unless we just happen to spend two tracks from Dave and Sammy that are just not good. But honestly, I feel like the, the, the chaos person in me feels like that'll just make the show that much more entertaining, but, uh, <laughs> but I can't predict the future. I don't know. So you guys are all just going to have to, uh, join us live when we do it and we'll all figure it out together. Mayhem ensues, uh, that, that will be next Thursday, January 19th market and be ready tune in to our YouTube channel. Uh, and speaking of our YouTube channel, uh, you can always find us at www.podcastwillrock.com buy some merch. We got some lovely merch. Our friend, our guest, JT's got some merch he's repping right now. We got a, a nice mug. You can put your hot coffee, your hot tea, or your very cold liquor and beer. It doesn't matter. We don't judge. Pour whatever drink of choice you want. Get your cups, get your mugs, get your shirts. Uh, Corey and I are talking about stickers. We might send out stickers yeah. to people. Who knows? Uh, that that doesn't sound too bad. Uh, we love stickers at this household. So, yeah, why not? Let's get on that. Find it there. Uh, please support us. It would be great. Uh, keeps uh, the lights on and keeps us going. Uh, and we we love your your support. And uh, also at Podcast Will Rock on Twitter and the Podcast Will Rock on Facebook. I know Facebook kind of seems like, I, unfortunately, I run the Facebook page. So sometimes if it feels like there's not a lot going on, that's because I either forget or am lazy. I'm sorry. I will try to remedy that. But uh, our producer extraordinaire, Corey Morissette, does handle the Twitter. So uh, he keeps it very, very active. So if you're talking to one of us on that page, it's usually him. So uh, uh, direct all your other uh, hateful words that you have for Mark to the Facebook page. Cause I run that one. So it's all good. Uh, Corey, if they want to find you directly, uh, where can they find you? Oh, they could find me at CD Morset uh, on Twitter and uh, yeah, at podcast will rock on all your favorite uh, social media platforms. And of course the show is uh, a proud member of the deep dive podcasting network. Let's very quickly go through the shows. Uh, we have myself, John Mariano and Scott Haskin, uh, doing backtracks, Aerosmith revisited, uh, John Mariano, and myself doing backtracks theme music, man, we're getting to some good tracks on that one. I, I just picked, uh, I'm into something good by Peter noon from uh, the naked gun. That was a really fun discussion. So check that out. Uh, Scott is also doing the Uriah heat podcast, the magicians podcast, new season just started this week. So check that one out. Uh, Nate and John at the deep purple podcast, the simple man at Skinner reconsidered. Terry T-Bone Mathley at T-Bone's Prime Cuts on the other side. Rye at the uh, Sabbath Bloody Podcast. Paul, Joan, David at In the Lap of the Pods. Andy and Matt at Hawk Binge. Eric and Jonathan at Maiden A to Z. Daniel and Josh at Diary of the Mad Men, the Ultimate Aussie Podcast. Ben and Sam at Universally Speaking, the Red Hot Chili Peppers Podcast. George and Hattie at the Judas Priest Cast. Clay and Ray at North by South Podcast, where they're talking uh, American music and Canadian music. That one's a lot of fun. Greg and Jonathan at So Far, So Pod, So What? Kevin at the Tom Petty Project and his Queen Podcast Seaside Pod Review. Quid at Ad Volume for All. And Sav, Dick, Steve, and Mark at the Rock Roulette Podcast. Woo. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of podcasts to choose from all to meet your rock and roll podcasting needs. We've got you covered at the deep dive podcasting network. So tune in to any one or all of those. It's all good. Uh, thank you so much to JT, Jonathan. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, anything you want to uh, plug or promote? No, I just want to say thank you guys for doing this and show you appreciation, gratitude. Uh, I love this podcast. Thank you for having me on tonight. Uh, just, you know, support these guys, go buy a mug, go buy a t-shirt. Um, but this is the highlight of my Friday when I see this pop up. So, um, super excited to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words yes. and the support always. And, uh, yeah, happy to have you. Well, happy to have you, uh, anytime you want to come on, man, it's, it's 
as soon as we can squeeze it in. Uh, uh, but uh, again, thank you for your patience. You know, I know you've been waiting a while, uh, but uh, we love it. We love the support from from all of you guys. Uh, so thank you. Keep it up. Uh, keep us going. We still got quite a few songs to get through. And then after that, who knows? Maybe we'll keep going and uh, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it. But you got to let us know, because if we don't know, for, if we don't hear from you, then we just don't know <laughs> sometimes because, look, we are just simple, humble fans of a band that uh, most of us out there really, really enjoy. We're not experts. We just uh, we calls it like we sees it or we hears it. Uh, and uh, thank you all for joining us for the ride we're not done yet though so be sure to keep tuning in share tell a friend do what you do keep doing it we are and the podcast will rock and we will rock you later